As a breast surgeon, one of the commonest questions I get asked is what does breast cancer feel like? Breast cancer can look and feel very different from one woman to another. Some of you may first notice a lump when you look in the mirror. You might also see a little dimple or a little puckering of the skin. You might notice a rash or a swelling of your breast. Your nipple might suddenly be pulled in or you might have some bloody discharge coming from your nipple. When you feel your breast, it's important to do it every month so you know what's normal for you. Your breasts are naturally lumpy before the menopause and breast lumps are really common and most of them aren't breast cancer. In your 20s, you might find a smooth round lump that you can move around the breast and this is called a fibroadenoma and it's harmless. In your 30s and 40s, you might find a painful tense lump like a balloon that's full of water and it gets bigger and smaller with your menstrual cycle. That's probably a breast cyst and it's also very common. Breast cancers normally feel different. They feel hard, like a rock. They have irregular edges and they're not smooth to touch and they don't normally hurt. But breast cancers can also be very hard to feel, even for a breast surgeon like me. And that's why we use ultrasound scans to look at every lump. Whereas harmless breast lumps have well-defined edges and are uniform in colour, breast cancers have an irregular outline. They are dark in the centre and have a shadow underneath them. And that's why it's important to scan every breast lump. A lot of women ask me if there's anything they can do to make sure that they never get breast cancer. And the simple answer is no, there is nothing you can do to stop it happening in the future. There is no magic diet or vitamin or supplement or treatment that works. The two biggest risk factors for getting breast cancer are out of your control. They are being a woman because you have more breast tissue than a man and getting older. But there are three things you can do that have lots of evidence and research that do reduce your risk of getting breast cancer. But they're hard work and they're boring and they're not sexy. The first is to cut down the amount of alcohol you drink to less than 14 units a week. The second is to eat a well-balanced diet full of fruit and veg and maintain a healthy weight for your height because obesity does increase the risk of breast cancer. And the third is to exercise regularly five times a week three aerobic sessions and two weight-based sessions, and that does reduce the risk of you getting breast cancer in the future. But you can do all of those things, just like I did, and you can still get breast cancer. I've had it three times now, and it's really hard to think, what's the point? Why shouldn't I drink and eat what I want and exercise? But the point is this. The point is that by living a healthier life, you'll be fitter and stronger to cope with the side effects of treatment if you do get breast cancer in the future. And you also lower your risk of getting heart disease and strokes in the future, which is what a lot of women die from. So it does make sense. When I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I wondered if it was my fault. Many women have asked me the same thing. And although one in 10 breast cancers are linked to faulty genes, such as the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes that can be passed down from your parents, we still don't know what triggers a healthy breast cell to turn into a breast cancer cell. One day, a breast cell develops a mutation in its genetic makeup. If more mutations happen in the right order, that cell can keep dividing and growing without being killed. It can develop its own blood supply and the ability to move through the body, which means it can invade other structures. In other words, that healthy cell has become a breast cancer. Now we know that certain things are linked with your risk of getting breast cancer. And the two biggest risk factors are being a woman and getting older. And both of those are out of your control. Having dense breasts can also increase your risk of getting breast cancer, but we don't know why. Young women have naturally dense breasts and they become less dense when you reach the menopause. Now, there are certain risk factors that are related to your lifetime exposure to oestrogen. The oestrogen is a female sex hormone and it doesn't cause breast cancer, but it does encourage ER positive breast cancer cells to grow. The theory is that over your lifetime, if you've been exposed to more oestrogen, then there's a greater chance that a rogue breast cancer cell could be stimulated to grow. And this means that women who have taken the oral contraceptive pill or hormone replacement therapy for 10 years or more could have a higher chance of getting breast cancer in the future. We do know that drinking alcohol definitely increases your risk of breast cancer. Alcohol can directly stimulate cells to become cancerous. It can also increase the amount of oestrogen in the body, which can then encourage breast cancer cells to grow. The second risk factor is hard to hear and even harder to talk about, but there is evidence to prove that being overweight increases your risk of getting breast cancer. 
And if you don't exercise regularly, you also have a greater risk of getting breast cancer in the future. But remember that slim, fit women who don't drink, like me, still get breast cancer too. And that's why it's important to check your breasts every month. Let me walk you through how a breast cancer diagnosis is made. We need three things to happen. A physical exam by a trained doctor or nurse, a scan and a biopsy. The exam is to feel both of your breasts and your armpits so we can feel the area that you're worried about and make sure that there aren't any other changes in the rest of your breasts. Then we go to do a scan. If you are close to the age of 40, you will have a mammogram. You don't have them if you're younger because they aren't very accurate in women with dense breasts and that means that small cancers might not show up. If there is an obvious lump or area of concern, you will have an ultrasound scan. You lie on a couch and a probe is moved back and forth over the lump. If the lump looks suspicious, you will then have a biopsy. After some local anaesthetic to numb the area, a tiny core of the lump will be removed so it can be analysed. Now, this may be done at the same time as your ultrasound, or you may need to come back to have it done at another mammogram appointment. You will also have an ultrasound of the lymph nodes in your armpit, and if they look enlarged or suspicious, you will have a biopsy of that lymph node as well. Now, it normally takes several days or a week for the breast tissue to be looked at under the microscope. If it is breast cancer, your biopsy will tell your doctor all the information they need so they can plan your breast cancer treatment. If your lymph nodes have lots of breast cancer cells inside them, your doctor may also arrange a CT or a CAT scan to see if your breast cancer has spread beyond the breast. There is no blood test that can diagnose breast cancer at the moment. Some oncologists use tumour markers to see if your breast cancer has come back and to monitor the response to treatment for women with advanced breast cancer. There is research being done to look at liquid DNA to see if we can identify breast cancer cells in your bloodstream, but we are many years away from that becoming routine. One of the biggest mistakes I see on social media are videos showing women how to check their breasts. They have you standing up, digging in with your fingers, and they tell you to do it on the first of the month. I'm a breast surgeon and I'm going to show you how to do it properly. First, you're going to look at yourself in the mirror with your hands by your sides. And if you have large breasts, lift them up so you can see the skin underneath. Then you're going to lift your hands in the air. Can you see any skin dimples or lumps appear? Then put your hands on your hips and push in. And this tenses the muscles behind the breast. Again, can you see any dimples or lumps? Now we come to feeling. Why don't you do it standing up? If you have large breasts, you're only feeling the top of your breasts, not the bottom half folded underneath. Instead, I want you to lie on a bed, resting on a couple of pillows, and this lifts your breast tissue onto your chest wall. If your breasts are very large, you can roll towards the center to lift them even more. You feel with the flat of your fingers, not digging in. And think of your breasts like a teardrop with a point at your armpit. You push your breast tissue against your chest wall to see if you can feel a lump underneath your fingers. Now you can go around in circles, starting at the nipple moving out, or do it like a clock face from moving out to in. It doesn't matter how you do it as long as you examine all of the breast. Now, once you've done that, sit up and rest one hand on your shoulder. With your other hand, you're going to reach up into your armpit and push against the fatty tissue against your rib cage to see if you can feel an enlarged lymph node. Now finally, if you haven't reached the menopause yet, you should check your breasts in the middle of each menstrual cycle when your breasts are less lumpy, not on the first of the month. I hope that's helpful.